So the number one question that I get across the website, this YouTube channel, has to do with what should I feed my Great Dane puppy? Now there are tons of different variations of this question in terms of can I feed them puppy food? Should I feed them adult food? The list really goes on and on. Uh, so today, in today's video, I'll kind of answer specific to kibble at least, kind of, you know, what are some general recommendations and general guidelines to make sure your Great Dane uh, grows in a healthy, safe, and controlled manner uh, to ensure that their long-term development is not affected here. Now, if you're brand new to the channel, my name is Zach, and this is Gus, and we're from the team at GreatDaneCare.com, and it's our mission to help Great Danes and their families everywhere, so if this is something that resonates with you and you're interested in not missing out on any future content, make sure to go ahead and subscribe to the channel below and turn on notifications to not miss out. Now, with that, to jump in, and I'll kind of explain this answer and kind of some of the caveats to it. The simple answer is, yes, you can feed your Great Dane puppy food. However, there are several very, very important caveats that we'll jump into that really helps qualify, you know, what's a safe puppy food to feed a Great Dane. Now, when you look at different types of kibble out there, there's really kind of different variations that are built for different stages of life. There is kind of, you know, all life or adult formulas that are really meant to help uh, maintain a dog and kind of their maintenance level of calories and micronutrients. To support an ongoing life basis, then we also have kind of an early life version that's deemed a puppy food to support, once again, for any breed here, kind of these really high growth periods. Um, many of these puppy foods have much higher levels of uh, nutrients in terms of calories. They have uh, different quantities of micronutrients as well to help encourage and support this growth. The difference really that comes in that makes Great Danes very different from other breeds is that they grow so much more and they grow for so much longer. So let's say another dog might be born at, you know, a half a pound or somewhere in that range. And then they grow up to be an adult and, you know, 40 or 50 pounds, it takes about six months. On the flip side, Great Danes are born at, you know, one or two pounds. And let's say that, you know, just averaging out males and females that as an adult, they reach 150 pounds. And that takes usually anywhere from two, even up to three years to reach that full size. Uh, so for that reason, because it's such a massive transformation in terms of the weight that they'll gain, the you know development of their you know physical bony structures and all the different joints, that's a lot of change to encounter. And it's also a lot of load and stress that their body has to kind of go through during this time period. Now, most of their kind of uh, skeletal development will happen in the first year of life, but we're still once again talking about a dog that started out as one or two pounds and is then probably at least 100 pounds roughly at the one year mark. So that's a huge, huge rate of change of growth there. And to make sure that, that happens in a safe and controlled manner, you want to make sure that any you know, food that you're feeding your Great Dane kind of controls the growth. Now, Great Danes, unfortunately, do experience different growth-related diseases that do often occur in kind of this one-year period. Two of the most common are panostitis, which is often abbreviated to just pano, and another one called HOD for short that I won't explain the full length, but the acronym is HOD. Now, these are both growth-related diseases that often occur when our dogs are either growing at just too fast of a pace and their joints just can't keep up with the stress that's placed in their bodies. Now, while the research is far from being done, it's still in continuing evolution and we're always continuing to learn more. There are a few things that we have learned over the last uh, 10 or so years here that really have made a big difference. Um, first and foremost, knowing that they are so big or they are getting to go grow so big over such a long period that we really want to control that growth in a very long and slow and controlled format. So not rushing your dog to get bigger, faster, or put on weight is something that should be absolutely avoided. And the biggest part of doing that really comes down to portion and calorie control. Now, many puppy foods have extremely dense nutrients that really jack up those calories per cup. Many of the ones that I've seen that are not large breed specific may have calories in the 400, 450, even 500 plus calories per cup. And that is a really, really calorie dense food that knowing that we want to kind of slowly control the growth of our dogs while still allowing them to feel full. It makes a lot of sense to have a very controlled diet. And that really starts with having a very you know, calorie moderate food. Uh, so a target goal that you should really look to, and this is just done by simply looking at the labeling of the food bag, is to make sure that it is somewhere in the range of 350 to approximately 400 calories per cup. Uh, this ensures that, you know, as long as you're feeding your Great Dane uh, you know, the adequate volume of food to continue growing here. Um, but that way, you know, they're getting enough to feel full and they're also getting enough calories to support that bodily development without it being so much that they grow really, really fast. Now, in addition to controlling the calories, that really plays a major factor in terms of how fast your Great Dane grows and how much weight they put on is also the ratios and the percentages of calcium and phosphorus that are in their foods. Since these micronutrients play such a large and important role in the formation of bone, 
Um, of course, when we think about all the structures of the shoulders, the elbows, the hips, ensuring that these develop at a kind of slow and controlled pace is really important for their long-term health. Uh, so the, the general guidelines here, when you're once again looking at the food labels for any prospective food out there, is that the calcium percentages are somewhere between 1 and 1.5 percent. Um, kind of the middle to lower end of that range is probably the better side, but you don't want to go below 1% because we still need to make sure that they have enough to kind of support the massive skeletal development that they'll be doing here. Now, in addition to calcium, you also want to look at the amount of phosphorus in there since it also coincides as a factor for the formation of bone. And this is actually calculated as a ratio to that of calcium. So for every part of phosphorus, there should be 1 to 1.5 times as much calcium. Uh, so I'll go ahead and put a little chart up here so that way you can kind of see some general guidelines about what to look for. Uh, but keep in mind, start with looking at the calcium percentages first and then reverse that based on what the calcium number is to see what the number for phosphorus would be just to make sure you're controlling this micronutrient. Now the third factor that I'll cover, and this has kind of fallen out of favor in the, the recent years based on the, you know, the focus on the first two, which really do help address many of the issues in terms of controlling calories control these micronutrients. But the third item that I still pay attention to is the protein ratio. Um, if you just think about it from the simple standpoint of protein plays in a, a very important factor in the creation, the building of muscle mass. Uh, we certainly, of course, want to make sure that we are providing enough of this to you know, support the growth of our dogs, but a surplus of it could potentially lead to the result of gaining a little bit more weight than intended initially. So I, I still look to kind of moderate the amount of protein somewhere in the range of 20 to 26 percent, somewhere in the middle of that, kind of being the ideal range. But many of the puppy foods kind of have really, really high proteins, you know, well above the 30 percent. Now, some people think that this doesn't make a huge deal, and maybe it doesn't, but when I like to think about it from playing it safe and trying to control the factors that I think could probably uh, still make a difference here, this is the third item that I still continue to look at to this day. Um, now, in addition to the kind of protein macronutrient, the other piece that will also play into this is the ratios of fat in the food. Now, the kind of you know rough ideal ranges similar to that of protein, uh, you'll want to kind of target the middle of this range is somewhere in the 12 to 20 percent. Uh, but typically, you won't see really high fat percentages because you've already addressed the number one item here for calorie control. Now, the foods that often have really high calories per cup either have a lot of protein and or a lot of fat. Now, so if you've already kind of pre-selected for a calorie moderate food, their chances are that it doesn't have crazy high protein or crazy high fat to begin with, but just kind of one last thing to kind of check the box here when you're looking at these. Now the last and certainly not least important item when you're kind of evaluating any particular food that you're looking at here to feed your Great Dane is going to be the quality of that food. Um, there's kind of a couple key ways to break this down, but essentially we want to be feeding our dogs as wholesome and of high quality ingredients as possible. So when you start by looking at these, uh, you want to look first and foremost to see if the proteins, especially the primary proteins, are from actual protein sources. So these would be things like chicken or beef or salmon. You know, these are wholesome names. Um, you don't want to see things like, you know, chicken byproduct or beef byproduct. Uh, that means that lesser in quality ingredients are being used in the manufacturing. And, you know, if we're just thinking about the quality of the food that we feed to our animals and their ability to in turn extract nutrients from it, it's going to make a big difference to see that quality ingredients are being used there. Uh, the same goes when you're evaluating, you know, the sources of carbohydrates, you know, is it wholesome fruits and vegetables? Uh, same as for the fats here, you know, is it actual names of fats like chicken fat or duck fat? Are we seeing different types of just generic fat or fat byproducts? You know, the latter of those things would certainly not be, you know, wholesome and have the most amount of nutrients for our Great Danes to kind of provide them just a wholesome balance of food to help ensure they're developing safely. So those are all the key things that I take into consideration when I'm looking at a potential puppy food to feed a Great Dane. That being said, if you're kind of looking at this from, you know, the different macronutrient ratios, also paying attention to the calcium and phosphorus, there are also many adult food blends or kind of whole life blends that could also be suitable for Great Dane as well. Um, it's more important to focus on food quality and kind of these important ratios for calories and micronutrients. And really, as long as you've got these met, uh, they can be suitable for your great and kind of regardless of age. And the decision of, you know, do you want to start with a puppy food and transition to adult later on, or just initially start with, a, start with an adult food that kind of suits them after their needs as a puppy and an adult and just avoid having to deal with the transition. That's a decision that's up to you, but really at the end of the day, as long as you have kind of taken care of you know, these really important factors, that's going to be a, a really good start to ensuring that your great Dane develops in a kind of safe and healthy way kind of throughout their entire life here. 
Now the kind of burning question, of course, you know, that I kind of alluded to is the control of calories is one of the most important things. And the way to help judge this, of course, while you can break up the food scale and try measuring things and you know doing all different kinds of crazy stuff, and the best way to judge if your Great Dane is getting you know too little or too much food is just with their body composition. Uh, so if you look at them, they're standing up. Kind of the perfect weight for our puppies, knowing that we want to kind of you know keep them the long and slow kind of you know lean controlled growth is that if you kind of look at them, one of the best indicators is kind of somewhere in this back area where their stomach should, you should see a taper up back towards the hip here. Um, the perfect stage, usually if you can just kind of barely see the outline of that last rib, that's a great indicator that, you know, they've got enough kind of, you know, meat on them in terms of muscle and fat to support the growth, but they're not so lean that you can see kind of every rib in their entire rib cage. That would be a sign that they're being underfed. So that kind of quick visual indicator in terms of whether or not you can see the outline of that very last rib it's just a great kind of simple way. Now, of course, there are other approaches in terms, you know, feeling, you know, to see if you can actually feel the other ribs, if you can't see them, uh, kind of judging by these other different hand and visual tests. But just really, in most cases, judging to see if you can see that last rib or not is kind of the best test to ensure, you know, do I need to feed my dog more? Do I need to perhaps, you know, pause however much they're getting right now and kind of let their body catch up so that way they lean out? Um, or if they're really overweight, potentially just cutting back a little bit of food to let them kind of lean out to an appropriate weight here. So that covers everything that I look for in terms of evaluating whether or not a food is appropriate for a Great Dane puppy. But as I mentioned, it's one of just, you know, a few of many questions that I'm asked time and time and time again. Uh, so what I've done over the years, uh, based on the number of questions, is I took all these and I put them into a common guide that makes it just really easy for you to kind of digest all the most important factors, whether it be feeding, care, grooming, all the things that are just, you know, you could find them if you searched all across the internet. But what I did is I took them, I put them in a single book to make it really, really easy for owners, much like yourself. Uh, so this is something that it sounds like you might be interested in. Make sure to go ahead and check out on our website. That's a greatdanecare.com forward slash ebook. Um, hopefully you like it. Uh, make sure to let us know down in the comments. Also, if you enjoyed this video and what else you'd like to hear about as well. And until next time, stay Danny, my friends.